right, settle in again. We've got a, a pretty big topic here to cover. And you know what that means? That means Scott's going to talk a lot. So I'll try to entertain you, but this is just going to take us a little bit of time. What we've got to cover now is where to put your data warehouse and even why that may be a misleading question. So far, we have a couple of basic terms. We've talked about what a data warehouse is. We've talked about what data marts are. Remember, subset of a data warehouse related to a specific thing. We know what OLTP is. We know what OLAP is for. OLTP handles our data entry. OLAP is for our analytics, for our reporting, right? So we've got the basics down. But what we're missing, we've even got a fancy diagram, right? So what we're missing is what goes where and why. And I kind of said at the end of that last video, hey, you know, we're the, this is our OLTP and this is our OLAP, right? But then I kind of, I kind of came back and I said, well, it's a little misleading and we'll talk about why. Well, now we need to understand why this is maybe an incorrect diagram or maybe there could be expanded pieces to this. Okay? So here's the thing, you cannot just say that SQL Server or Oracle or DB2 handles the OLTP side of things and Analysis Services handles the OLAP. It's not that simple. Okay. The OLTP side is fairly straightforward. This is going to be on a relational system like a SQL Server, an Oracle, a Sybase, a DB2, a MySQL, uh, something that is meant for working with OLTP databases, something for working with tables, columns, and rows. Okay, That is easy. Okay? You cannot put an OLTP database on analysis services. OLAP databases, the online analytical processing databases, this is a little more, well, okay, because I can actually put that on a SQL server, or I can put it on analysis services, or I can even put it in both places, okay, so we actually need to expand our knowledge of OLAP. OLAP is simply defining how we store and use the data for analytic purposes. It doesn't say this must be stored in tables, columns, and rows, or it doesn't say it can't be stored in tables, columns, and rows. It doesn't say it has to use SBase or it has to use analysis services. None of that is in the definition of what an OLAP database is. OLAP simply defines how we store it and we use it. We store it with probably a lot of duplication and we use it for analytical and reporting needs. Doesn't say that it can't be a SQL server or it can't be uh, analysis services, right? Okay, now relational is one side of the coin, but now let's move into that idea of what a multi-dimensional database is. And now I'm going to, to go ahead and tell you, I'm not going to even begin to attempt to, fur, to fully explain what a multi-dimensional database is in this video, not even in this whole chapter. That's what chapter four and five are all about. Okay? But I'm going to give you some ideas. Okay? Relational deals with tables, columns, and rows. Multidimensional is going to be a little bit different than that. Okay? We're going to visualize and think of it a little bit differently. Okay? So again, multidimensional, we'll talk later about that. But here's a term. I try in my videos to underline, italicize, and bold terms that I think are very, very important that you should know. Okay, so relational data warehouse is a very important term. This is when you have an OLAP database that's stored on a relational server. What are some of the relational servers out there? The SQL Server Database Engine, Oracle, um, you know, any of the major vendors out there, MySQL, uh, DB2, Informix, Sybase, there's a couple of other ones, right? So it's a relational database. This is where we have tables, columns, and rows. 
And actually, the types of tables, the design of the tables that we will have, will include what are called fact and dimension tables. Now, I'm not about to try to talk to you about dimension and fact tables here. My goal right now is to help you understand where you're going to put your data warehouse, not to help you understand all of the terms just yet. I'm trying to give you the very, very high level, and we're going to delve into what dimension and fact tables are in chapters 4 and 5. Okay? So dimensions and fact tables. Okay? Now, the report server can actually directly access this database and submit reports against it, do ad hoc reporting against that. Okay. All right. Now, here's the thing. What's the purpose of your data warehouse? Is it strictly for analysis? Uh, or are you going to be using this for archival reasons as well? If your only purpose in using a data warehouse is for archival reasons, you probably don't need a relational data warehouse. Okay, remember, archival systems store records on a one-to-one -one basis. You're copying the rows from the data entry systems into the relational data warehouse, every single one of them that meet whatever filter that you might apply. Okay. And then you're adding a little bit of metadata that goes into the data warehouse as with it. Okay, so it's copying and, and or archiving the records. So you probably have some way of moving that 700 megs of data. Remember we talked about the one terabyte. Uh, we said, hey, we've got a one terabyte database. And, you know, we want to make our uh, archival data warehouse here. We're going to make it one terabyte. And then we're going to chop this down to 300 megabytes of the live data. Right? So that means we've archived and we have deleted what's archived out of the live database. So in this case, this would be a relational, oops, arrow went the wrong way, a relational data warehouse. Right? So that would be kind of your archival system. And we said that in that type of a system, it is one-to-one -one records. It's not calculating aggregations. It's actually including the detail records, not the aggregations. Right? So most of the time, a data warehouse, a relational data warehouse, will either store aggregates or it will store detail records, one-to-one -one relationship records. You're probably not going to find many that do both. So generally speaking, it falls on one side of that. Not saying they can't, again, right? They could. However, it's going to be fairly rare uh, to find one that kind of is a dual purpose one. Okay. And what you're looking at right here, uh, you take a look. These are the, the actual records here for aggregations in a data warehouse. So this is a relational data warehouse storing product data. These are aggregations, the number of units sold in this particular year, quarter, month, product combination. Okay. It's not the detail records. You can see that we sold 7,198. That might be one product, uh, I mean one order. That might be 7,198 orders or somewhere in between. We don't know. It's strictly storing the aggregates. And what you can also take a look, this is actually a very interesting slide if you kind of focus in. If we expand, you can see that the data is rolled up. So the data is rolled up by the quarter. So we can see that you know, the individual sales for month one, two, and three are stored in that row. But then the rolled up sales for all of Q1 are pre-calculated and pre-stored here inside this particular table. It's a relational data warehouse. This is one that stores aggregates. Okay, so that's an example. You are pre-calculating and pre-storing the aggregates. Later on, if you reprocess the cube and you find that you had another sale in the third month of 2010, then you're going to have to update this row to include the new sale. And then down at the very bottom, you can see this is sort of subtotals and grand totals. The grand total for all of 2010 would be stored right down here. Okay. Now, taking a look over here, we're looking at an archival type. You'll see right here, these are the actual detail rows. 
stores. There are no aggregates stored in this one. Okay? This is actually detail records, a one-to-one -one relationship. Notice here that this is like an order detail table. We have an order key, we have a product key, an order date key. These are all related to other tables. That would be related to a product table. This would be related to an order table. This would be related to a time table. And some of you might be looking at that and recognizing this is a fact table and we'd be working in a uh, what probably would be a star schema uh, with dimension tables here. But there are no aggregates stored in this example. If we want to find out how many of product number one was sold in the third quarter, we would have to actually join back to the order date key to find out all of the order date keys in the year of 2010, in the third month or second month or third quarter, whatever it would be. And then we would have to sum or count or min or max or average, whatever it is we're trying to do. And these are detail records. Okay. You know, one, maybe uh, if you're kind of having a little bit of trouble understanding here what I'm talking about. In this example, this was our aggregated version. There will be no more rows. Okay. We have decided that we just want year, quarter, month data. Therefore, there are 12 months, four quarters, and one year, so 12 plus 4 plus 1 equals 17 rows. There won't be any more rows added to this table. Not unless we decide we want to roll it up by day, at which point there would become 365 more plus 12. Plus, yeah. So you, you will not see an expansion of a table like this that would be designed to store the aggregates in the data warehouse. It would be 17 rows because that's the product. Okay, you've got uh, 12 months plus four quarters plus one year. So we're going to have 17 rows in it. Over here, though, how many rows are going to be stored in our archival system? I have no idea. Uh, we might have 50 million, 100 million, however many rows had been stored in the data entry systems, that's how many are going to be stored in the archival system. So I guess that's the difference also. That one's fixed, one is, uh, who knows, one might be growing. All right, Whew. take a break, shake your head out, kind of wake up a little bit. Let's talk a new concept here. Let's talk about multidimensionality, okay? So that was the relational data warehouse. And we saw that there could be two different types of the relational data warehouses, an archival or one-to-one -one style versus a pre-calculated aggregates only style. Let's move to the multidimensional data warehouse. Okay. Multidimensional data warehouse is when we are not storing this in a relational server, number one. So this is not a database that's stored inside of the SQL Server database engine. This would be one that's stored inside of analysis services, for example, a multidimensional database management system. And we have different terms. We don't talk tables, columns, and rows when we're working with multidimensional databases. We're talking about cubes, measures, and dimensions. And you can see the cube depiction down here at the bottom. And so uh, let me just say, I'm not here to fully describe what the multidimensional data warehouse is. The purpose of the next video is kind of to introduce you to what a multidimensional database actually is. But just like the uh, pre-calculated relational data warehouse, now our users can directly access this cube for their reporting. So they can do ad hoc reporting against the cube. Okay. Now, Here's the thing about the multidimensional, and I mentioned it in the last video. It is strictly for analysis. You would not use this for archival purposes. This is strictly to run um, reports against. And it is similar to the pre-calculated aggregate relational database in that it does not store details. It only stores aggregate information. That's all it's going to store. Okay, so pre-calculated aggregates, not detail. Okay. Analysis services is the multidimensional database server or the multidimensional database management system. Okay. That's what we're going to actually use. So the answer, when we ask this question that this video is all about, where should I put my data warehouse? The answer is actually 
you probably need two databases. One is your relational data warehouse. The other is your multidimensional data warehouse. You will use your relational data warehouse to store archival records. This is, the mo this is like the data warehousing pattern for Microsoft systems that I'm showing you here. Most of the time, this is the way it goes. Doesn't mean it's the only way. Okay. Most of the time, here's what happens. You will have a relational data warehouse that will store your archival records, your one-to-one -one relationships. That's going to have fact tables and dimension tables. You're going to load it with SSIS using ETL from the data entry systems. Okay? The second data warehouse is your multi-dimensional data warehouse. Okay? That is where the pre-calculated aggregates are stored. Okay? Now, we have a new feature in our diagram. I've taken out the Learn It First logo and I've moved that kind of silly thing here. Remember that we've got data entry over here. Now we have our relational data warehouse here. This is of an archival type. So these are one-to-one -one records. Every row that meets the filter of things you want to store or archive gets copied from the data entry system into the archival data warehouse, the relational data warehouse. But it's not storing pre-calculated aggregates. It's storing records, detail rows. The data warehouse then, the OLAP version of the data warehouse here, our multi-dimensional data warehouse here, is now stored inside of analysis services. Okay. So these are the pre-calculated aggregates. Sorry for my handwriting there. And if you'll remember, this was the report server. And uh, hopefully, the report server is able to get what it needs out of the multidimensional database. Which is faster? Let's ask this question. Um, which is faster to read 100 million rows and come up with the average min, max, and count? Or to read 17 rows and come up with what those row values are? All right, yeah, that's the difference. Like over here, let me, uh, God, I've made the mess out of this. Let's just say that this is um, the tables that we want about sales are 100 million rows. And now you're asking for the past 10 years of sales over quarterly by country. You've got to slog through 100 million rows to do it. Over here, all you have to do is just look at a little bitty piece of that information because it doesn't have a hundred million rows. It has the pre-calculated aggregates. So it's going to be way faster. Uh, we're, we're talking order of magnitude faster, uh, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times faster, uh, 1,000 times faster to read from that pre-calculated aggregate than having to go back to the individual detail rows and summarize those. All right, so we've got this expanded diagram, but I, I kind of have to cut it short here because there's a whole separate discussion we need to have on what multidimensional databases are. What are cubes? How do we think about those? Why is it so much faster? So sorry, but we've got to come back in the next video.